What's going on you guys? Frost here and I'm back with another video. Today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Diana jungle guide. She is a very strong AP jungler you can play right now. She has a lot of scaling potential and just like solo carry potential. She is my favorite champion uh, in just League of Legends in general. So I tried her many different ways, made her like try to make her work in the jungle as, as best as I could just because I like the champion so much. And the build really works really well. I would highly advise you to at least try her out. She might, meet, not, might not be for you, but definitely a very strong champion nonetheless. Now, let's get right into the runes. The rune setup for Diana used to be Dark Harvest before the preseason, but since that changed, it is now actually Electrocute. It is just all about the burst damage in general, and Electrocute helps you the most. Dark Harvest right now is way too hard to actually get stacks on effectively. If this would be buffed in the future again at some point, maybe to make this rune a bit stronger or maybe even revert it to the way it used to be with farming stacks, then Dark Harvest instantly becomes better again, just so you know. But as of right now, you would definitely have to go with Electrocute. This is the highest damage rune you can get and just the best one in general. Now, after that sudden impact, Diana has a lot of uh, dashes with her ultimate that you can use. So getting the sudden impact from that is big. And 6 magic penetration is actually quite a lot, especially since like a lot of burst hits at one time. So that's a lot of magic damage going into somebody with 6 extra magic pen that will help a great deal. Then I go for eyeball collection usually just because I need, I just want to be strong as possible. But you can also go for a ghost borrow if you like cannot trust your team at all to ward for you in the early game. That would be an issue because... If you don't get wards in the early game and you get invaded by like a Xin Zhao or a Lee Sin maybe, then your game can be a very, very difficult one. So in those situations, Ghost Borrow will be very, very good. And yeah, that, that's basically the only reason you could go that if you like can't trust your team to ward or cover for you or anything. This might pertain to more of the lower elos, but that's just an FYI for you guys. And then after that, you go Ingenious Hunter. This is an insanely strong rune on Diana. The reason for that is the way you build Diana, the way I build Diana, the way that works really well for me. I have, I believe right now, an 80-ish percent win rate at around diamond, high diamond elo. So that this works really well. The Zonia's cooldown is so insanely low. Like there are fights, the, the prolonged fights, of course, but there are fights where I dive in, one shot somebody, and then the siege continues and I'll, right on the next moment, I'll have my Zonia's back up again. Like right at the end of the fight of course not instantly it's like i believe like uh a minute cooldown or a minute a little bit over a minute cooldown which is really not bad for zonias it's a big big deal it allows you to just dive in one shot maybe one or two people and just be safe so that is really all you want to be is safe especially with the bounty system the way it works right now if you get ahead if you get a lot of kills and you die you can give a thousand gold to maybe an 80 carry on the enemy team and that is definitely not something you want to do so for the secondary runes, there's really only one option you can go for, and that is go for a scaling setup. So what I like to do is I like to go for absolute focus. This will give me a lot of damage through like the earlier stages of the game to still, because as Diana, you have a shield, you can dive in pretty like one shot heavy. So absolute focus, you're going to be at 70 plus percent health a lot of the time, and then you get your damage boost quite easily. And then you combine this with gathering storm to make sure you get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. So you will still be able to just grow and grow. Like a lot of games in higher elos do not necessarily go past like 30 minutes usually. They always end at like between 20 and 30 minutes. But the lower elo you go, the better this rune becomes for you to actually pick up. Because longer games, 40, 50 minutes, people have trouble closing out games. And then Gathering Storm just becomes an insanely strong rune. This rune is already really strong because if like uh, a game goes on for 30 minutes, it's 48 extra ability power. That is a solid amount of extra ability to power to just get from one single rune. And this combine this with the early game pressure you have with Electrocute as well. Your damage, like your one shot damage starts at level 6 once you complete like your jungle item. It mainly just starts at level 6 once you get your ultimate. Then as soon as you can complete your jungle item as well, you're just going to start one shotting people with Electrocute quite easily if you do your combos correctly. So that is definitely something you can do with that. And then as soon as long as the game goes on, the absolute focus for the high health, just extra ability power, and then in combination with Gathering Storm, you can get a lot of damage and one-shot people throughout the rest of the game quite easily. Now, as far as runes go, 
It's pretty straightforward. You just want to get as much adaptive force as possible. This is ability power. Diana just skills so well with ability power. She gets increased shielding. She just does a lot of extra damage just every like with everything. The increased shielding is a big thing here as well because the more ability power you get, the more shielding you get, which means the more tankier you get with the more ability power. So that's a very good synergy. And yeah. And here I like to go for the defensive rune, the armor most of the time. You can of course go into the magic resist as well if you are facing a magic damage opponent in the jungle like Evelyn or maybe Elise, whatever. Any, any type of magic damage you get against you, magic resist will be very useful. But most of the time you're facing like melee damage, AD damage opponents, which armor is just the best one to go for at that point. So that's the rune setup for Diana. Let's get into the item build. Is this saved under anything? I guess it is. Um, new, all right. So Diana's art, item start is very straightforward. Hunter's Talisman with a refillable potion. This is the best start you can get because the Hunter's Talisman allows you to stay a lot, like very high health. You use a lot of your uh, a lot of your skills on monsters, which then replenishes mana, and then also replenishes your health. So I mean, there's no real better option than this. It's pretty straightforward at that point. Now here, you always really want to go for the um, Red Smite enchant. The reason you want to get the Red Smite enchant with Runic Echoes is the Red Smite is just 100 million times better than Blue Smite. I see a lot of Dianas. If I ever see a Diana, let me put it that way. I don't see her that often, but if I see Dianas, I see them building Blue Smite. I don't know why. A lot of people might be like, oh, because like landing your Q will be a lot easier than, but that is really not that big of a deal. Like, a lot of Diana players think, okay, well, I have to land my Q at all times first, every time. That's not the case. You have to land your Q every single time if you are going for early game fights. But in early game fights, people don't really have the uh, dodge capability. They don't really have all that move speed or the, but like anything to really escape you that effectively. If you can kind of curve your Q correctly, you're going to be easily be able to hit them just every single time. Because it just has a massive, massive hitbox. And if you curve it correctly, it's really, really hard to dodge. So for that reason, blue smite, not necessary at all whatsoever. You already like do a lot with just landing your Q, hitting your ultimate. You can use your E to even make your Q even easier to hit. So there's really no real use for blue smite. It is better to go for red smite because as Diana, in the earlier stages of the game, you're gonna have more trouble 1v running people since you don't have that much ability power yet. So you're gonna have less shielding, less just straight burst damage. And having a red smite in a 1v1 scenario against like a Xin Zhao on like level eight or nine makes a world of a difference. If you do not have red smite in that fight specifically, then you're just gone, like you die. You are a mage still and Xin Zhao is a bruiser. So if he dies onto you, he has red smite, you don't, you lose. You don't have like the same burst potential like Zix has, for example. I can easily go for a blue smite because he has ways to dodge with his ultimate. He has like a massive leap to get out and all that type of stuff. Diana doesn't. She goes in and that's it. So for that reason, red smite is a lot better and it's 100% the item you want to go for. Now to follow that up, I always get boots. Boots are very important and I, there we go. Boots are very important. Sorks are always the option on Diana. You want as much magic penetration as you possibly can to get as much damage as you possibly can. 18 magic penetration is a lot of additional damage. This, these two item combinations right here, these two items together, gives you insane potential. If you get one or two kills early to get this a little bit sooner than, usu than like you usually can, it is massive. You can easily scale a game completely from there. Just these two items, you can start like one-shotting people. If you do your combos correctly, you can just dive in get squishy targets very easily without even having to land your Q first. Because at this point you can start pressing W and ultimate and then just dive in, press E, hit him a couple times with Q as well and you're just gone. Like there's nothing to do. It's undodgeable as well. The only thing they can do is flash your, like, your ultimate and then that's it. But with your E you can cancel their flash if you time it correctly. And yeah, it's just, this item combination is where it starts and you kind of have to work up to this a little bit. Ganks, Pre like level six are a little bit more difficult. You can get them off though, but yeah, this item combination just is where your game starts. Now, after this, you might think, well, what do I go next? I see a lot of Dianas go for maybe a Nash's Tooth, which is a terrible option, by the way, please don't do it. You might be wondering why don't do it because I see everyone do it, but Nash's Tooth, you are not really an auto attack based champion. Let me put it that way. 
sure your passive has that third hit of course and yeah it does a lot of damage but you are still a mage and a burst mage at that and for being a burst mage you do not want to be in fights for that long you have zonias to survive which is the item i built after this zonias you have that to survive with the item cdr with that you can have from your runes this has a very very low cooldown so you can use it quite often in a lot of fights and this item is going to keep you alive it's going to allow you to one shot people also makes you a bit more tanky with the additional armor it provides and then also your shielding and increased ability power you have already it is a lot better of an option than nash's tooth nash's tooth is a decent item on diana and has a place as maybe a sixth or like a seventh item in a very late game, you guys might be wondering, seventh item, yeah, you can sell like your boots or your jungle item for it. But that that's where it has a place because the only thing that thing is good for is pushing turrets a little bit faster. And that already isn't necessary because Diana has insane pushing potential. As soon as you use one of your abilities, you get a 50% attack speed boost, which means this item becomes kind of useless because it gives 50% attack speed. You can kind of get that just by using an ability. So use your E, it's not that effective if you're standing next to a turret and you instantly have the turret already with a decent amount of ability power. That means this item becomes kind of obsolete and I would not recommend you picking it up. That's just that. I just wanted to put that out there. So if you still pick it up after this, do whatever you want, but I highly advise against it. It is a lot of money that you waste every game. 3000 gold means a lot. It's a Zonias. Zonias is the best item on Diana, really, hands down. Now, after Zonias, there is just one item. You need to get this item. It is Death Cap. Death Cap, Large Roll. Just save all your money to keep buying Large Rolls and into a Death Cap. Even though you might wonder, like, oh, I have like 1100 gold. Doesn't matter. Just save it. It is better that way. You might hit like a little bit of a wall, just a tiny bit with the amount of damage you can do. But in the long run, getting a death cap after your Zonias instantly gives you about 500-ish. A little bit more ability power than that, but around that course. And that is just insane. Like, that gives you more shielding, more damage, way more one shot potential, a lot more survivability because of your shielding. It is just the best combination. This boosts your ability power up so much that it just, it helps. Diana is all about ability power, so Revenant's, like, death cap is the item to get right here. Now, at this point, there are a couple of viable options that you can do. This is where your build kind of starts to vary. These four items are pretty much core every game. There's really no changing it because if you don't get it in this order, it's not going to be as effective as it can be. And that is definitely something you do not want. You want to be as effective as possible to get through a little bit of the weaker stages of Diana. As soon as you get to the later game and you can just completely blow people up, then it doesn't necessarily matter too much anymore. People are going to be like, oh, hell, let Diana OP and all this, that. But yeah, these four items is definitely what you want to get. And after this, you have options between Morello Nomicon, Lich Bane, Nasher's Tooth here, but I'll explain why. The um, Spellbinder, you have Banshees as well. And I believe that is it. Uh, Void Staff, of course. That's the one I was missing. So these are your options as a last two items, even three items and four items. You can sell like your jungle item and your boots for some stuff. But these are your options. Now, after Death Cap, if they don't necessarily have that much magic resist yet, and you're kind of scaling really well, let's say you have a couple kills, you are doing really well in your farm, and you get a lead, then a Morello, or rather the uh, Oblivion Orb, is a very good pickup, since this gives you an additional 15% magic, oh, 15%, sorry, 15 magic penetration. This gives percentage magic penetration, which is better against magic resist straight up. But if they don't have that too much too much of a jet or you're playing against a lot of squishies, then the Oblivion Orb becomes the item you want because that extra magic pen is just going to help you way, way more. Now you can build this into a Morello as well. This item is also really good into Mundos or just healing champions that heal a lot or that base on healing. So Red, Red Form Cane, maybe Mundo, maybe like anything Fiddlesticks, something like that. Morello Nomicon is a great item into that. Master Yi even, you can get reduced their healing. That makes a lot of a difference. So in those games, Morello is a, pretty much a no-brainer, but if they don't have too much magic resist yet, you can get Oblivion Orb into the Morello Nomicon, which then just is your magic resist or magic penetration item. And then you can still get a Void Staff after if they start to ramp up on magic resist, but this is a really good like in-between power spike item because it just does a lot for you now if that is not the case and they have started build magic resist a lot 
then Void Staff is definitely your option. You need that magic penetration to get your damage off. If you don't get your damage like through their magic resist, it's really gonna be a rough time for you. Now, as a, as like this setup, you can have this at this point. Let's say they had didn't have it early, but you still often need the or you need the healing reduction or anything like that. Rello into Void Staff, you're gonna have six items. Now these items are all optional, these four right here. Usually what I do, if it gets to a very, very late game, then flat magic penetration isn't gonna do as much. You're mainly gonna be reliant on your Void Staff, so you can kind of, if you still need the healing reduction and you need to keep this Morello, no, like, no questions, but you can kind of replace your Sorks at later stages for the Spellbinder. Because the Spellbinder gives you 10% move speed, which kind of makes up for the move speed you lose when you have boots. So it, it, you're going to be in similar like power there, but you, it gives you 120 ability power, just base, which is a lot, a lot of ability power. And combine that with a death cap, your magic like ability power is going to skyrocket a lot, and then you're just going to be even more tanked, you'll do even more burst damage. And your Void Staff is going to provide you all the magic penetration that you still need to have, and you'll be fine. Now, for the same reason, you can get a Lich Bane 2 as a late game item to replace maybe your jungle item. Or even the Morello Nomicon if you don't necessarily need it anymore. So you can run around with like a Morello Nomicon that you, um, well, well, you don't need it anymore because they don't have, like you don't need the flat magic pen as much in the late game as you do in like the earlier, like early to mid game. So Void Staff will suffice and then you can get a Lich Bane for straight up more burst damage. And with this, you can keep your jungle item um, as well. Wait. Yes, this one. So if this is the case, you can also just replace like your Morello or something with a Lich Bane. Usually, if I if I buy a Morello Nomicon, it's either against re like healing champions, which in that case I need it, or I will buy it if I'm having a solid lead. So at that point, you'll never really get to like this type of item stage because you're just gonna win way earlier, and that is really where Morello just yeah kind of is in its niche. Let me just put it that way. Now this is. If you have this setup right here, this is a specific situation where Nerestor's Tooth can actually be good. At this point, you have all the ability power you need to get a massive shield. You have the Zonias for survivability. You have all that. In this situation, you can pick up a Nerestor's Tooth and sell your jungle item for it in this in this case. Um, with Nerestor's Tooth here, you're going to get more CDR, which is very nice. But also the attack speed here actually helps. Because this is stages where just split seconds on turret pushing is going to matter a lot. Also with this Nashor's Tooth, you're going to easily just be able to do Baron a lot faster, Dragons a lot faster, because your attack speed increases and already have a lot of ability power. So your uh, just auto attacks in general do a lot of damage. You'll get your passive proc often on Barons and Dragons. And that way you can easily clear Barons and Dragons no problem. So this is where Nashor's Tooth actually becomes a good item as a very, very late game option. Never, never earlier. Now, in other games, you can't really go this. You have to maybe go for a Banshees. Think like targeted CC that people can hit you with before you can even get into a fight. And in those in those cases, you need a Banshees to survive or just straight up for magic resist if they have a lot of burst damage that way. So this is the build for Diana. If you guys have any questions on it, make sure to put those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, please remember to hit the like button as well. And yeah, let's get right into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Diana, of course, into a Twitch. Now, this matchup for Diana is one of the easier ones since Twitch doesn't necessarily invade you that much early on. He does gank your lanes a lot, though. So if you do not actually play a little bit more proactive and just try to gank your lanes as well and you AFK farm too much on Diana, which... Can happen quite easily on this champion since she does clear her camps very, very effectively and very quickly as well. You need to be careful of that, but as soon as you can kind of match him gank-wise while still farming faster than him, that's the way you win and that's the way you beat this champion. It's not like he is a Xin Zhao, for example, which he invades you very easily and at that point you need to be very careful not to just get killed. You kind of need vision control at that point and that's where Ghost Poro can actually be very, very effective for you. If you need to just have the vision to counteract a Zin or a Camille, something like that. Now to counteract like any invades or anything like that, I usually start on the top side of the map with this side. Well, whilst I'm playing on this side, the best start for Diana is the red buff start. Because you can go red buff into Krux as you can see right here. 
Uh, Twitch does kill my mid laner at this point. This is very ex like predictable from a t for a Twitch, so I was kind of expecting my mid laner to die. Like vaguely, even though, I mean, he should know he to be very careful early on, like especially level 2. But yeah, on Diana, starting on red buff, doing crocs and raptors is an easy quick level 3 since she does have a lot of clear potential. So for this reason, it's very, very good to just do, like, go for that. Now right here, a full clear on Diana is usually the, the thing you try to want to do. Maybe you have to mirror jungle, which means that... Let's say he starts red buff right here. You kind of want to ward in this general area, either in this brush, but it's better to have it maybe like here in this specific place because this sees champions that can jump over the dragon pit. Let's say Lee Sin, maybe Vi with Q, anything like that. Just something that can get over this wall. If they can get over this wall and walk like that to your blue buff and you have a ward in this brush, they won't see you or like you won't see them. So in that case, the ward right here is a little bit better because this sees this. But also, if they walk through the brush and up here, you can still see them if they have the ward right there. So, before I do anything, I am going to turn this to the other side here. So, that's kind of the thing with warding. If you see the enemy jungler walk over this ward and you did your red buff, your Krux, and your raptors, and you see them walking towards like maybe your blue or like the scuttle here, you can instantly mirror and go to like wolves, his blue, and then the, the gromp, and you'll both have a full clear, but on the other side of the map. And that is really where you want that vision for. So kind of if you're a jungler, always try to ask for that ward. Because if you don't ask for that ward, laners generally in lower elos won't place it. In higher elos, diamond plus, master, all that type of stuff. People generally tend to place that ward a little bit more often. Just because it's a very, very important ward as a jungler. You need that information. If you don't get that information and you just play it normally, you can easily just lose the game straight off right there. Like it has happened to me before. So, yeah, in this case, he didn't invade me. He ganked mid lane and walked topside. So I knew I was kind of safe to just carry on with my full clear. And since he walked topside like that and he's a Twitch, I also know that after this full clear, I can easily pick up the scuttle crab that's in the river too. So that's very, very good for me. That gives me a solid start. This is really the ideal start you could want on Diana. So there's really nothing better than this. Right there, I hit the plan to make sure that I... Um, give pressure to my bot lane my bot lane is pushed in i am unable to gank them however because i mean i'm diana level four it's not really gonna happen that much also here by the way just uh i'll pause it real quick but yeah as a diana level pre-level six you shouldn't really feel like you have to absolutely gank sure you need to be there in this type of situation my entire jungle is down i cleared the scholar crap i saw the twitch go invisible uh, about here ish so I figured he'd run into mid lane and try to go for this Aurelia potentially. So I'm like right here to kind of mirror, like counteract that. So if he goes in, then we still have like a chance of fighting them. Don't just back. Because if I did my entire clear right now, I took the scuttle, I back. Then I'm going to stand here at my crux waiting for like maybe 10 seconds. And those 10 seconds could have been better spent actually ganking this Gragas or helping the Aurelia survive this gank in particular. So yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing. But don't feel pressured to gank as a pre-level 6 Diana. Because most people will know that as a level, uh, as a Diana pre-level 6, your ganks are pretty shit. They're decent, but it's it's a little bit iffy. So yeah, I still I, fi I figured Twitch would be there. And this is kind of the, the way you want to gank with Diana as well early on. So I'll show you this right here in a little bit more slow-mo. Wait a second. Alright, I see the Twitch there. I placed the ward. Uh, I saw Twitch go invisible on that ward just barely. Now right here, this is kind of the way you want to gank. So right here, the Twitch shows up on the control that Aurelia has in lane. He does still walk forward, but I walk in from the side. Now what happens here, Twitch sees me and then instantly just decides to back off. Aurelia right now makes the, I think makes the engage here. No, I make the engage here. So one of the things you can do is E flash. So right there, what I did, I pressed, I pressed E and then flashed. That instantly moves your E to the other, the other, like the other location so you can pull them in. And as soon as I pull them in, they get closer to one specific spot, which means that Aurelia can land the uh, stun she has, which lands it on Twitch. And Twitch is an easy, much easier kill than Gragas, so we pretty much burst Twitch straight off the bat. And that's just all because like her E is a very good stun mechanic, kind of. It pulls you, like it gives you a lot of distance. So if you use it on a bigger range, then it cu cuts them in like as more range, if that makes any sense. I mean, it, it makes the distance that they have to walk a lot longer. That's probably the way, the better way of saying it. So right there, 
I just decide to back in lane. I give some pressure to the Aurelia, but I also just want to back without walking to the side way too long because my jungle camp right now is respawning. This one has respawned already. I used that time that I had a, a little bit of downtime to like get the counter gank in the mid and get the kill for, for the uh, Aurelia and just kill Twitch. So that, that is something you definitely want to look for. Like after a full clear, after I cleared this entire thing and did scuttle, you kind of want to either look to pressure bot lane just a little bit to maybe relieve some pressure if they're like standing right here. You can also invade like this camp and maybe do this camp as well, depending on how they jungled or if they're sticking up around top lane way too long. Or you can gank a mid lane from this direction right here and just like walk into the lane, hit like a slow, maybe your E, anything like that. That would be a good play as well. Whoa, 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 that's way too fast. Let's go back to me. Now, as soon as I get a little bit of ability power, clearing your jungle camp becomes really easy. You're just gonna notice that you're gonna do increasingly more damage. And if you use your spells correctly and time them correctly together, you can pretty much have a permanent passive uptime, which gives you a, like a lot of extra attack speed, as you can see right here. It's a 50% attack speed boost, which is a lot of attack speed to just get every time you use your spell. So kind of as, as you see me clearing camps, I kind of weave my spells in between. The best thing you can do is lead with Q, take a little bit of damage for those two, like the couple of auto attacks you have the increased move speed for. And then use your W right after to get again the increased attack speed on those auto attacks. And then use your Q, your, your Q W, Q, uh, it just keeps kind of repeating itself. The, the cooldowns will sync up in that direction. So that's the way it works. As you can see right here, I am kind of looking to do my weave as best as, can, as I can. As you can see, pretty much the camp dies straight to a Q when I walk away. Now, right this game, I got a pretty early level 6. This is kind of normal for Diana, but it, I did do the gank and I did get a kill plus a little bit of lane XP, which lands you level 6 at 6 minutes. And that is that is perfect. If you can get that on Diana, you're in a very, very good position. Alright, here I just saw Soraka Ward. Um, the, the gank with this is pretty easy. I'm kind of looking to just get in range. I'm level 6, so if I can get into a range to just press R, I don't even have to land my Q. I don't care about that. All you have to do is just get in range, land your ultimate, you can press E, and then your laners can easily follow a gank like that up. People generally try to dodge your Q or move in weird positions to try and dodge your Q because they then think you don't go in. But that going in on that is actually even easier because landing your Q becomes free, and then your ultimate is just like a straight hit. Alright, so here, since Twitch was low and the Aurelia is standing on the enemy's red buff, I just figured I can easily go for his red buff towards this Aurelia and make a play happen. Now this Dragon shows up as well, but as you can see, the way I play this here is in a very like particular order. So I walk up, I go and Dragon's land the Q first. I try to do as much damage as possible whilst also kind of blocking for the Aurelia. Because with my shield I can soak up a good amount of damage. And right here, all I'm doing is, I can go back here. Since I use my initial combo on the Gragas, or just go a bit slower. So right here, I'm preventing Gragas from like hitting Aurelia with a body slam because she kind of needs to get her stun off and all that. I'll also can take a lot more damage on her with my increased shield. But right here, as you can see, my Q, W and E are on cooldown. I do still have my ultimate, but on level 6, just straight up having your ultimate, not that useful. So I'm off to the side waiting for my cooldowns. As you can see, still 2 seconds on Q. Aurelia is going in though, but I can't really help her that well. I'm kind of low and I'm still waiting on cooldowns. As soon as I get my Q back up though, you see me walking back forward again. Land that Q, land that ultimate. I mean, she died before my Q even landed, so my ultimate didn't reset itself. But that's really what you have to wait for. In the early levels on Diana, it's important that you, in those types of skirmishes, have to land your Q before your ultimate every single time. If you do not do this, you're gonna lose out in a little, on a lot of damage potential, and it's better just step away from the fight for a second wait for cooldowns and then go back in and just kind of do it like that because if you don't do it like that you will like put yourself in a lot of problems let me put it that way you will die you will put yourself behind it is much better to just wait on on your q cooldown early on and that is what i did all right here the switch is just sticking around for that i am just gonna smite it because i'm a level higher so my smite range is higher which means it's easier for me to get that and i kind of figured twitch would at that point just walk back up which we did have vision off, and I just land my Q on the Twitch right here, and I get the engage on him. He flashes, he has to. My electric root procs, and he is very low, like pretty much half HP at that point. I already knew he was about half HP, so there's really not much he can do at, like, really there. At this point, I have 1600 gold, which is a massive, massive buy for me. 
So I'm definitely looking to back as fast as possible. I do, however, still want to clear my Grome because my next jungle clear is going to be from top side down. So doing the Crux, Red, and then Raptors and all the way down. And by that time, your Grump would have probably respawned again. So clearing that real quick would be very beneficial for you. On that back, I can afford my jungle item, a boots, and a cloth armor. The reason I pick up a cloth armor is because it just builds into your Zonias very, very well. Also, having early cloth armor against something like a Twitch or just 80 champions in general is very good, just straight up. And yeah, I'm kind of looking to potentially gank this clat right now with the way I, like, I just path it right there. I was maybe considering going top lane, but I decided to just clear my jungle camps first. It is very important to keep that clear up. And yeah, now right here, this is an ideal situation. I mean, this is the situation you want to look for, gangs. So right here, I am just clearing my jungle. This fight, I was kind of looking at this fight, probably. Just seeing what was going on here. I really, I pretty much got killed by Gragas straight up. And as you can see right here, I instantly press my sweeping lens. Because this wave position here, this is going to come in. So his minions are mirroring that and are about here. So they can't spot me. Also, if I'm standing about here and he doesn't have this actually warded, he won't see me. And with that, I can easily land my Q on him once he goes for this initial wave. Press my ultimate, get the red buff slow, and with that, you can press WR to get the last hit in. And that's where you don't have to wait, of course, for your uh, Q cooldown, because that makes no sense. So if you know you have to execute damage, there's no real reason to wait for your Q. You might as well use it. Having your ultimate on like a 14 second cooldown is not a big deal whatsoever. So right here, I just want to get the, like as much plating as possible. Diana, with her passive, is very, very, very good at actually taking platings. So if you can pressure somebody out of lane, like I just killed this Gragas, I put him out of lane, I can easily get like one or two platings at every single given moment on that turret. Doesn't matter where it's at, if it's like low HP or high HP, you can easily pick up first turrets because Diana's turret damage is insanely high. I'm not sure what I was doing right there. I think I was just standing out of range of the blue buff without even realizing it. I don't know. Also, using your skills to clear your camps, like I'm, like you see me doing right here with the Q, W, R, and all that, and keep using my R's for everything, not a big problem at all. As soon as you get your jungle item, your mana sustain due to that proc of it being the lower mana you have, the more mana you gain. That pretty much sustains you throughout your entire jungle clear and allows you to keep constantly using all of your abilities to really clear your camps. Also, blue buff really helps too, but. Yeah, that, that, that mechanic of the blue smite that gives you the more mana back the lower your mana pool is, is really the, like the only mechanic that allows you to just keep using all of your abilities on every single camp to make sure that you clear it as fast as like possible. I see a lot of people, if I ever see a Diana, I see them kind of saving their mana a little bit, which makes no sense at all, because with this blue smite thing, or no, it's not blue smite, with the runic echoes enchant, you can easily just use your full burst combo and the lower mana you get, the more mana you get back. So it kind of balances out every single time. That's also something you definitely need to take note of. All right here, that was the most scuffed blast I've ever seen in my life, but it doesn't mess necessarily matter. Now, right here, I clear blue, level nine. I see a Quinn that's very low right here. So all I have to do is land a flash ultimate. Now that was the most scuffed like auto pathing walk, I guess. Zillion does speed me up, so I still get in range of Quinn. All I have to do is press R and I get a free kill out of that. I'll take it. And at this point, you definitely want to look for an Infernal Dragon. You just killed their bot lane, their bot lane is dead. Like, there's really nothing they can do, and they this fight just happened on top lane too. Also, Twitch is in mid lane. This is a very free Infernal Dragon, and Infernal is very, very important to get. As Diana as well, if you get your jungle item, you can easily solo this dragon too. With your W, you're not going to take that much damage, and all you have to do is make sure that you use your combos constantly. So that means... Every time you land your Q, use the R reset on Dragon. Every time your W is up, use the Q, W, R, everything like that. Just keep using all your abilities. And then at the end, you save all of your abilities to about 1400 to 2000 health, depending on how much ability power you have. And then you can insta burst the Dragon from that range. Baron as well, which makes stealing Barons on Diana very, very easy. All you have to do is just land your Q, W, R, and then smite at the exact, si like at the exact time you press your ultimate. And there you just one shot it from like 2,000, 3,000, depending on how much ability bar I have. Late game, I've even had situations where I was, of course, a little bit ahead, but I smited the Baron from about 3,200 health. There's really nothing else the enemy jungler could have done. I just swept in Q, W, R, smite on top of it, Baron's dead. It's very easy to secure objective like Baron and Dragon on Diana, just using that, that combo. Just make sure that you land your smite right when you press your ultimate to go in. 
All right, here my top side is up. I am looking to um, kind of get this clap to, to stop him from getting this third. I was there in time, but also Jace would be there in time too. So I just opted to back off and go clear my camps. I can look for a gank here because of this control ward in this brush. I know there's no vision. So if you are playing uh, like top lane, mid lane, for example, always place control wards for your jungler because that just allows the jungler to know certain paths they can take to gank for the lanes and all that. Now I see the Twitch with the Aurelia right here, so I'm not too worried. I can easily just check this up if the camps are up. So I'm walking past the wolf camp, walking past Grom. Of course the camps are down as you can see in the replay here, but I don't know that at this point. All right here, that blue is spawning very soon. So I'm just kind of waiting around here. Maybe Twitch, I saw Twitch walking up. Maybe he walks this direction, maybe not. But just standing there waiting for the blue to spawn. As you can see right there, just a straight QWR combo. Pretty much halves the blue HP, very, pretty much instantly. And with that proc, as you saw right there, this is a perfect example of why you just have to keep using your spells. Oops, I just brought backspace again. Go forward. This is just why you have to use your spells. This is a perfect example. Right here, I lose a good amount of mana, but I also gain my mana back quite quickly. As you can see, I really didn't lose any mana, just spamming my abilities throughout that camp. Again, just one more time. Like, as you can see, I lost actually no mana doing that. Alright, here, perfect time to do Rift Herald. Also, by the way, Rift Herald on the end is very easy to do, because with your Q, if you just time your Q ultimate combo, right when this eye is up, you can go with your ultimate right through the enemy. You can always hit the eye, and that's the timing you have to get. So always use your Q combo whilst this eye opens. So Q ult, hit, press your W to tank, and walk around him a little bit. Wait for his eye to open again, Q ult, hit. Very easy Rift Herald kill. Alright here, you just see me use as much mana as possible. Of course I have blue buff now, but again, I'm just spamming my abilities on these camps to get them down as fast as possible. As you can see, it's very easy, very quick clear. Also, this allows me to get numbers like 108 CS on a jungler. Pretty much matching my lane CS, yes, so that's that's very, very big as well. Now, this is where ganking becomes very, very easy. As you can see right here, the fight happening on bot lane. Now, some of you might think, alright, how would I go about going into this fight? How would I do it, me personally, and how are you going to do it? This is the best way to do it, really. And some of you might be like, well, that makes no sense because you didn't land your Q first. But right here, as you can see right now, the prime target I have to kill in this fight to make sure that she doesn't keep healing everybody constantly is this Soraka. So right here, I just have vision on her. I just press ultimate. It doesn't matter. My ult now goes on a cooldown of 15 seconds. Not that big of a deal. Just press ultimate. I go on the Gragas. Quinn is already kind of back here. So it doesn't necessarily matter that I use my ultimate. I didn't need to reset. I mean, reset could have been nice, I suppose, but killing the Soraka, killing prime targets as fast as possible is much more important than actually having your ultimate. Also, your ult cooldown the later the game goes. If you have a Zonias, you can kind of prolong your ult cooldown that way and get it back very, very easily too. So it's really not that big of a deal to just lead with your ultimate. It's actually a very solid play because people try, tend to try and dodge your Q. If you don't like press your ult just at them being stupid and trying to dodge, you're just going to be in a much better place. Now right here, using the power of the Rift Hell to just get a push going on bot lane. There's also a dragon spawning very soon, which is kind of why I placed the Rift Herald as well. Rift Herald is going to pressure in with our bot lane. They can easily stay bot whilst I do this Rift Herald. Or whilst I do this dragon. It's a second Infernal, which is very, very good for us. This Rift Herald gives a lot of pressure on this turret, so they're going to react to this first and not to the dragon. Which means this dragon is pretty much free straight up. That is one of the uses of Rift Herald. You can hang on. I could have hang on to it, but it's better to just... Make sure the dragon is free that way. Now here, Klet comes in, sees me doing blue buff. Um, I'm kind of in a sticky situation, but this is where I opt to go for the blue buff first. Um, I, I'll explain this right here, actually. This is one of the things you definitely need to be aware of. Like, in a fight, if you're not fighting jungle camps, your mana pool is not as high as just straight jungle camps. It's not infinite. You have to be a little bit careful with it. So the first thing I opt to do is, in order to win that fight, I opt to use my entire reset combo on the blue buff first. And also smite it to get all the health back that I was missing in that situation against Kled. Now, that kind of put me into a situation where I can actually win the fight against him. So my my, e and, my Q and W will still be on cooldown, but right here, 
I just press Zonias, waiting for the cooldowns. The cooldowns right here don't match up, by the way, in the in the, in the bottom corner, as you can see. This doesn't really match. Like, I'm, I guess it kind of delayed itself, but yeah. So I'm waiting for my Q and W cooldown, as you can see right here. Waiting, waiting. I instantly pretty much one-shot the... Um, sorry, the Quinn right there. And yeah, I was kind of waiting just to, for Zillion to get a range. I knew I had a Zillion on this team, so I knew I could kind of stall fight that. That's also, that's what I did there. I'm, all right, I'm terrible at explaining this right now. Holy shit, let me try that again. All right, so Klet goes in. First thing I do is I make sure I secure the blue buff to make sure that I have enough mana to sustain me through the rest of this fight. Now, as you can see, I'm wait I'm pressing Zonias to make sure I get all my cooldowns back in time throughout the Zonias. I flash the initial hit. So that the Quinn can't blind me and the, and the clad, um, I believe it's is like his hook thing, his E or Q, whatever, can't hit me as well. So I dodge most of the important damage coming in with that flash. And then right as that happens, I just go back in on Quinn, pretty much instantly delete her. Barely didn't have the damage for that though. And at that point, I stalled enough time as well with playing with the Zonias and all that to make sure Zillion gets in range of me to ult me again. And that's kind of where... A very sticky situation, prolonging it and waiting for cooldowns whilst also getting like the objective you wanted to get. That's the way I played that fight. I might have explained that a little bit scuffed, but I hope you guys understand what I meant by everything. Yeah. Alright, here I'm kind of pressuring forward quite heavily. Uh, I have a lot of damage right now. I'm a very scary like, threat for that clad. I'm not sure why he tried to fight me. I'm 4 and 4 I have pretty much equal farm to him. I am, in fact, one level down on him, so that's at least something. But it, as soon as you land that Q, as you can see right there, I pretty much instantly burst him out of his, um, out of his, like, mount form. Also, Red Smite. This is why Red Smite is the smite you want. As you can see, that entire fight, he was Red Smited. So I didn't really lose that much HP. If I didn't Red Smite him, this fight would have been a lot closer. And sure, Zillion was behind me. That helped, but Red Smite is really what helped me survive there. Now at this point, this is going to be a massive back for me because this is the back where I get my Zonias. As soon as you get that Zonias, that is your biggest spike. And oh, I actually pick up a large one as well. I guess with a little bit of the money I had left, I decided to buy an M Tome because the next back I could probably easily afford a large one anyway. So yeah. Making sure right here that I pressure and get as much of the enemy's jungle camps as possible. You need to ask Diana, make sure that you keep your farm going. Because if you don't, then you're going to put yourself in a little bit of a sticky situation. Now right here. Um, this. Alright, we see Twitch right here on this Raptor camp. So this ward right here helps a lot. We see Twitch at that moment. This gives me time to clear this camp. As you can see, just as fast as possible with all my skills. As just is the best way to do it. So, and then I press my Sweeping Lens right here, because this is the time where Twitch could walk in on this at any moment. And Sweeping Lens would detect him with, like, a red sign right here. There's also a ward right there, but yeah, this, this Sweeping Lens will detect the Twitch coming in. That's why it's on. And he walks in about here. I see him just through vision. And I pretty much instantly get him with, like, a surprise combo with before my Jace could even do anything. And that is also the combo, like, the surprise one-shot combo on Diana, just... Emphasizing on surprise because that is where you can actually get people with that Q. I'm standing here waiting for Twitch, waiting for Twitch, waiting for Twitch. Now, right here, I I lead with Q, instantly press ult before it even lands because it's gonna connect. That bursts him. Whilst I'm dashing with my ultimate, I press W to make sure those hit as well. And then to make sure all of my W procs hit him again to one shot him, I press it R instantly right after. So you initially, you QR at pretty much the exact same time, then press W mid-air, press R again. That is an instant one-shot combo on Diana that pretty much always gets the target. If it's a squishy target, they're gone. If it's a tank, depending on your ability power, they can be gone as well. But that's a surprise combo, that's if you can lead with your Q. Doesn't always happen, isn't always the case, but it's, a, it's the best combo you can do leading with Q. Now right here, as you can see, I'm making sure that I keep my farm going. I want to get to the death cap stage. I need to make sure I get there. So I am making sure to keep farming, farming, farming as much as possible. Oh, I pressed back face again. Oh. Right here, I'm just going towards top lane. And I mean, that's the specific situation again. The surprise Q combo. Sometimes you don't need the second R, but yeah. So I press my sweeping lens here to make sure I don't walk over any vision. So I have the flank on this. As you can see, I see Soraka press the, that combo right there. 
Same concept, QR, W midair. That's it. Didn't have to R again this time though, because Soraka is a much squishier target, so that's beneficial for me. But yeah. Uh, all, the, all I gotta do at this point is just push the wave out. I'm kind of looking for an opportunity to jump on this flat if I can get it. Uh, Twitch does show up here, didn't expect him, but yeah, you never expect a Twitch really. No. Oh. Alright, let me just show this fight here. I'll show it first and then talk about it. Let me just put it that way. So Twitch show up. And that, I mean, as you can see right there, that's why Zodias is a really, really good item. Uh, so Twitch shows up. The main thing I gotta do here is back off first because I do not want to get stuck into a bad situation near a turret. Now, th at that point, I jump on Twitch. Quinn interrupts me, which is kind of bad for me. I make sure that I go for that, then I press Zonias to not get hit by everything and get blown up. This gives Zillion time to kind of run down one in position, gives Jason time to run in position as well. Twitch dies, and that's how that fight happened. Again, Zonias just being a massive deal there and coming in clutch. Making, like, pretty much allowing me to make that play. I mean, that's just brand, like, that's just a casual pickoff. Now, this is the point where I come back for my death cap. I had the 2350 gold. And my blue buff is spawning soon, kind of waiting for that right now. So I'm clearing around it, doing blue. I can fix the dragon here too if I want, so that's what I'm going for. I always make sure to sweep this just in case that I know if I have to smite it or not. And yeah, right here still looking for farm and that's again the situation. Like this stage in the game, you this, this type of situation is would be very bad for you normally. But because I have Zonias right here, I can easily... Press it, make sure my team gets in position to back me up, and then from there I can take it. Again, Red Smite is coming in clutch, allowing me to tank a lot more, and that's why you want to get Red Smite. This is why that Smite is very, very good. Now, I am low right here, as you can see, but I'm still sticking around using my Sweeping Lens to make sure that I'm not standing on any wards. Nope, that's not the right button. Zillion did ult me, sadly I didn't die though. I could have played it a bit more aggressive and tried to die with that ultimate, but I de didn't necessarily want to go for that. Still waiting, still waiting. Alright. That is the moment I decided to go in. Play that back. Now Quinn shows up. That's where I leap with my ultimate. I instantly leap with my ultimate to open up. Now, I did die there though, sadly. My Zonias was not off cooldown yet, so... It would have been smarter for me to just wait for my Zonia's cooldown before I did that. So that was the mistake I made right there. Now some of you might, might be like, alright, there's another mistake you made. You didn't like lead with your Q. I mean, potentially, but the main thing there is just trying to surprise the Quinn. She is 0-6 though, so yeah. Alright, because she is 0-6 and, and she is really low, I just lead with this. She gets really low. She gets pretty much killed but the mistake i make right here is walking back down if i walked up here i would have this fight would have been won but because i walked down and pretty much tanked everything whilst everything i had was on cooldown my zonias my just my spells in general that was a very big mistake i made i tried to hit the twitch here if i walked up this would have been a much better fight for me always try to play around the cooldown so if you don't have your ultimate up don't have your w up or anything like that Walking around and trying to stall out for those cooldowns is definitely what you want to do. I had Zonia some cooldown and everything, and that's the reason we lost this fight. Now, they do, don't really get too much of that. They get a good amount of shutdown gold for me. I was worth a thousand gold to that Twitch, so that's a pretty big deal. Now, this stage in the game, as you can see right here, I buy an Oblivion Orb. They don't really have any magic resist on the team. Now, there's one Hex Drinker right there, but it doesn't really mean much. So this is pretty much a scaling item. This gives me just a lot, a lot of damage. And yeah, alright. Just making sure that I keep clearing here. As soon as I, like, get myself ahead, I make have to make sure on Diana you keep yourself ahead as well. That means taking a lot of, your, like, your jungle camps constantly, taking enemy jungle camp constantly. And yeah. Again, kind of playing this like an assassin, standing off to the side, maybe looking for some place, looking for something to go on. There's a Baron up that we can go for right here quite easily. As you can see, this is what I do on Diana with Baron Smites, by the way. 
Alright, I landed. It's about 2,000 health. I mean, I kind of missed it right there, but it's about 2,000 health. So that's why I throw my Q, W ultimate, and then slide at the same time. And that's pretty much going to burst it from 2k off, as you saw. I was a little bit off, but at that point, it was kind of safe anyway. It's very hard to outburst or outsmite that, so pretty much pretty like instantly securing everything. Now, this is a perfect example of like a late game engage for like for a Diana. So you see the enemy carry or like squishy out of position. All you got to do is flash R on him, hit your W, hit your E, get him closer, then hit a free Q and go from there. You can press Zonias, you can maybe still try to fight something. In this specific situation, I just decided to melee fight the Gragas since there was a Zillion right next to me that could potentially ult me as well. And going from there, we just kind of walk through the rest of this fight and yeah. Catching somebody off guard like that leading with ultimate is pretty much unlike counter. There's no counterplay to that. You instantly one shot him, you didn't have a chance to react at all and he just died. That, that's very easy type of situation for a late game Diana fight. You just press your ultimate lead with like a mid W mid air, press EQ, gone. That can be the case on multiple targets as well. So if you jump into an enemy team, they're cluttered together. You can easily lead with a WR. Go in, land your Q right on the spot or pull someone, like use E to pull them into your Q, into the little bubble of your Q, hit everyone. That's going to be massive burst. Press Onias, win the fight. Your cooldowns are going to be back up and take it from there. So yeah, that's pretty much the Diana guide for you guys. It was a bit of a long one, but I tried to be as thorough as possible on my favorite, absolute favorite champion. I play this champion a lot. I have a very, very high win percentage on her as well. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, or, I mean, so far, I mean, if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well. Subscribe for more content as well. And yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for potential future guides, leave those in the comments too. And see you guys in the next video. Bye.